And what a great day for this country, for the Heritage Foundation, and for the wonderful Republic of Somaliland. Before we begin, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the people of Ukraine, who, as we speak, are battling for freedom, and for many of them, their very lives. May we pray that that conflict ends soon, with Ukraine whole and free. Our hearts and prayers are with them. I also mention Ukraine because it's relevant to our discussion today. In case anyone has missed the last 4,000 years of history, or just the last couple of weeks, I want you to know that the world is indeed a dangerous place. For as much as we are blessed to have peaceful neighbors and oceans to our east and west here in the United States, we can't ever be complacent about our security. That's one of the reasons why it's so important for the U.S. to develop strategic and amicable partnerships, especially with those like our esteemed Somalilander guests here today. Since I'm an educator at heart, I must first walk us through some relevant history. But as I promised my new friend, His Excellency, President Abdi, I'll be brief. Somaliland's independence is not currently acknowledged by any country in the world, including the United States. This wasn't always the case, though. Somaliland was briefly independent in 1960 before joining the rest of Somalia. That union was ultimately rejected by the Somaliland people, but not before it was too late. The world had decided that Somaliland was indistinguishable from Somalia, no matter how Somalilanders felt. In the 1980s, rebellions against the brutal dictator in power broke out against Somalia, including in Somaliland. Somalia's armed forces devastated Somaliland during the fighting, practically flattening its capital city. It may, in fact, have been the only conflict in history that featured aircraft taking off from a runway in the same city they then attacked with bombs. That was just one of the cruelties of that war. In 1991, the dictatorship collapsed, but the fighting continued throughout Somalia, dragging it into failed state status for two decades. We're probably all familiar with the Battle of Mogadishu, better known in the US as the Black Hawk Down incident. Those awful events took place in 1993 during the period I'm describing. We might also be aware that an Al-Qaeda affiliate, Al-Shabaab, began conquering swaths of southern Somalia in the 2000s. This group, which is still powerful, had links to some of the men who perpetrated the 1998 bombings of the US embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. I'm recounting all this because it highlights how remarkable Somaliland's experience has been. It was and is the exception to Somalia's turmoil. After 1991, it redeclared independence and created a functioning state with its own army, passport, currency, foreign policy, and very importantly, free elections. Foreigners can walk around Hargeisa without security, and ISIS and Al-Qaeda have virtually no presence there. It's hard not to admire building a viable state amid such difficult circumstances. How Somalilanders have achieved all this is equally commendable. They had a powerful claim for international sympathy after the devastation they suffered during the war, but they didn't wait for help from anyone else. If they had, they'd still be waiting today. No, they went instead about the business of building their country largely on their own. The clans that had been on opposite sides of the fighting reconciled and in the process created one of the few examples of a successful indigenous peace process. They committed to building something that was peaceful, democratic, and workable. This brings me back to why I think the US and Somaliland should be strong partners. First, this territory of its own accord has stuck with the democratic system and process for three decades. It hasn't been perfect just like no democratic system is perfect. But the old saying is that character is how you behave when no one is watching. Well, Somaliland has stayed faithful to democracy when hardly anyone was noticing. This is proof of genuine belief. Second, let's envision where Somaliland sits. The Bab El Mandeb Strait, a shipping choke point that carries much of the trade between Europe and Asia, is about 70 miles away. Yemen, where American allies are fighting Iranian-backed militias and Al-Qaeda, is just across the Gulf of Aden. 
Somaliland shares a border with Ethiopia, Africa's second most populous country, and in normal times, a landlocked economic dynamo. Somaliland's recently renovated Berber report has great potential for boosting the economy of Ethiopia and its neighbors in East Africa. Right next door to Somaliland is Djibouti, which hosts a number of foreign military bases, including China's most prominent military footprint on the continent. To the west, and also in a commanding position on the Bab el Mandeb, is Eritrea. In January, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi visited Eritrea and announced a strategic partnership with that country. We need to be clear-eyed about the competition we're in with the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party is America's single most formidable opponent and is devoted to advocating for autocracies like itself and Russia by violating the peace and prosperity of nations that refuse to kowtow to it. America must meet this challenge with resolve. That would include a close relationship with Somaliland, given its strategic position, its pro-American orientation, and that almost alone in Africa, it's been immune to Beijing's overtures and threats. In fact, Somaliland has established ties with our Taiwanese friends, another unrecognized democracy that the United States should support. Those of you familiar with East Africa know it is a tough neighborhood. Sudan's hopeful democratic transition has been sabotaged by a coup, one of the leaders of which, by the way, was recently in Russia to strengthen ties with Putin's criminal regime. Ethiopia is caught in a terrible civil war that we also pray will end soon. Eritrea is an international pariah and one of five countries that just voted against a UN resolution condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Southern Somalia is paralyzed by political battles and Al-Shabaab is still strong. Amid all this volatility, Somaliland has enjoyed relative calm, providing evidence that there is, in fact, fertile ground for a truly sustainable partnership. Finally, I believe, and call me crazy, that American policy is most effective when it is tethered to reality. We will see few gains in East Africa if our policy there does not account for the on-the-ground truth that Somaliland has been functionally independent for decades. Count on the Heritage Foundation for always trumpeting that fact. So let's upgrade our policy. The United States of America should strengthen its position in a precarious and important part of the world. It should do the justice of honoring the consistent aspirations of millions of Somalilanders to rule themselves. And America should proudly be the first state to recognize Somaliland as an independent nation. We look forward to that day. In the meantime, it is my honor to introduce His Excellency, the President of Somaliland, Musay Bihi Abdi. Sir. Sure.